so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eliza, and I'm a commoner. Uh, a proud commoner at that. For if I'm a commoner, that means that the commons still exist. And so my goal during the next nine minutes is twofold. One, I want you to, I want to foster a belief in the commons, and I also want to foster a belief and hopefully your support in the role of art and activism as a tactic for reclaiming and restoring the commons. And before I go any further, when talking about the commons, it's also really significant that I acknowledge the land that we're on. We're on unceded Okanichi and Chira territory, which is significant to the, the commons and the space that we are on, because without them, this place can exist. And so in the spirit of decolonization, I have to acknowledge them. And so five years ago, almost five years ago, myself and another Guilford alum, Katrina Salati, we were playing in the dirt at the edible schoolyard and somehow, you know, when talking about liberation and how are we, how are we all going to get free, the, the conversation shifted to, to the direction of murals. And we were like, wait a second, you like murals? Oh, this is an interesting thing, because we, up until that point, thought about a lot of racial justice, environmental justice, never talked about the role of arts. A lot of our work was saying no and was based in resistance. And so together we decided to do a mural at the Edible Schoolyard, and we got another Guilford alum, Kathleen Kennedy, to actually paint it. But so part of our process was going out into the community, into the streets, and we were asking people one simple question. What would make Greensboro a healthy city? And we interviewed over 300 people. 100 of them were youth. 15 and under was roughly that kid age range. And we got over 300 answers. And part of it was being in the commons, being in the space, in the public space. We were able to plant the seeds of this question. There was this 50-year-old man who is from Greensboro who was like, I never thought of that. That's interesting, that question. I never, and that was the only response we got. Um, but then there was little children who were like, I want a living wage. I want a good job for my dad. I want, I want recycling. There was people who were like, you know what? We should close down Elm Street every Friday and have a 5,000 person dance party. And so these answers were beginning to you know, cultivate thought as to what our city can be and how to make it healthier. And then one day during a conversation with Liz Seymour, who was at the time the executive director of the IRC, which is then where we did our second mural, um, she was like, you know, this is really important work just because part of this is the process of reclaiming the commons and recreating them. Because so often, you know, outside in our lives, it's anywhere except where we are is in between, and it's not a place to be. And <clears throat> It's interesting because also during the course of the past five years, not only have I been involved with the mural project, but an infinite amount of social movements that have had profound effects on our society have also taken place. So during the past five years, the Arab Spring in Egypt popped off, which then influenced Occupy Wall Street, where protesters then also took public space to claim their demands. Then in 2012, Idle No More also took flame in um, starting out in Canada, um, based around a response to the Ombudsman C-45, which was going against treaty rights and just further colonization of indigenous peoples in uh, Canada. Um, but then it also just, it took off. It took off internationally. Um, people were doing uh, round dances in the Mall of America, which then, interestingly, this past year, um, in the height of the Black Lives Matter, also the Mall of America was another site where actions were taken. So it's interesting also the history of social movements using similar spaces and taking place and taking, taking spaces that we're not allowed in. Or when we are, you have to have a reason. Because so much of, for example, you know, a year ago on August 9th, Mike Brown was killed in the streets of Ferguson um, for jaywalking, for being black in public space and jaywalking. And so, so much of the social movements that are around us at this moment are based on the fact that we're not allowed to be in public space, or specific people aren't allowed to be in public space. My first year out of Guilford, I also was doing AmeriCorps at, through the Partnership to End Homelessness. And it was interesting, just as I was able to 
start seeing with a different lens, I was able to see the benches in downtown Greensboro and how they have separators in the middle so people can't lay there, they can't sleep there, and the policing of making space, of curating space for certain people. So if you're experiencing homelessness, if you're black or brown, if you're a youth, there was a youth curfew during the past five years, also during the summer, it's like space has been policed very heavily um, in this city art and nationally and internationally. And so it's been really interesting as I've been finding myself in the commons over the past five years and part of my finding myself is also as a pedestrian and someone who depends on public transportation to get here, which is also why I was late today, sorry. Um, but being in public space is not acceptable. And so part of the process of the mural project and of, you know, of the social organizing, community organizing that I do is for the right for people to be in public space, for the right for people to be able to create the spaces that they want to be in. Um, and for example, on that first wall that we did, we had students from Youth Focus come and help paint. And um, it, Youth Focus is for um, 18 and under youth who are, um, have difficulty in home or are at risk uh, be either to themselves or their families. Um, and there was, you know, a group of the youth came and helped paint one day and just like the level of excitement of being part of that creation. There was one girl who was like talking about how she wanted to be a doctor and go to Duke and that she was going to tell her family that like she helped paint this tree. Um, or on our second wall, there was families, people, anytime like there's murals, it's also like you're doing stuff for elongated time in public space. So there were cars that would drive by and be like, yeah, good job, keep it up, keep it up. And we're like, yeah, like you can come paint and people would like drop their kids off with us and be like, oh yeah, like little Jimmy's gonna like paint for the next hour, like this is like good for, good for them. Um, and but there was this, there, these two young women with um, prams pushing their children and they were walking by the IRC and they're like, huh, like can, can we paint? I'm not an artist, which is also an, another thing because with murals, some, like people are like, oh, I'm afraid of art. I'm afraid of creation. It's like, no, like you can help create. Like you have the power to create. Um, and uh, so this one of the two women grabbed a, a light purple paint and started painting the shutters of one of the houses on the mural. And uh, it's funny because afterwards, Justin, also another Guilford alum, um, who designed the wall, and we also did, had an interview process for that where we asked people what makes home. Um, the answers to that question, uh, we interviewed 100 people, but we probably could have only interviewed maybe 10 because the answers were the same across demographics. Um, but Justin was like, oh my gosh, I don't believe that she chose purple. I'm going to paint over that. It's like, no, you can't, actually. <laughs> actually, that was her creation. She will come back to see this. And she'll be able to show her children, like, hey, I did that. Um, and so the power of also rooting in place and like believing in space and place within this creation of art is also really significant. Um, and it's interesting because I never considered myself an artist. I might not consider myself an artist, but I'm definitely proud of the creation of the commons and just the. Being able to defend it and be in it and allow other people to be in it and giving pe like people the power to be in place, I think is, that is why, why I do what I do. And it's definitely from the inspiration, the work, and being connected to the community that I was able to receive like through Bonner and during my time at Guilford. Like, that is completely invaluable and I wouldn't be who I was without that. Um, and we have room for, uh, people to be involved for future murals. Um, we've done a lot. Tina back here is also in the mural project. Yeah, Tina. Um, and uh, part of it also, you know, is just any, anyone can create. And if that's like the one thing that you remember from this is like you have the power to create and you have the power to change and influence your surroundings. And so with that, I hope you uh, believe more in the commons and the power of art and activism to do so. Thanks.